Welcome to Nyford Middle School Force and Motion, sixth grade science. We're going to take a look at goal five. Students will be able to explain Newton's first law. Let's check out a video. Tie your back. Sit. I didn't go anywhere. You'll note this first oh. law is often called the law of inertia. Okay. It talks about bodies at rest, bodies in motion. But we're not talking human bodies. We're talking objects, things, stuff. Like my favorite helicopter, Igor, here. Igor. The technical definition goes something like this. A body in motion at a constant speed will remain in motion at that speed unless acted upon by an outside force. A body at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. Piece of cake, right? No? Well, let's look at it this way. Say you take a ride in a spaceship to some faraway galaxy. Ooh. Space through space at about 10,000 miles an hour, and there's nothing to slow me down, like the atmosphere or gravity of a nearby planet. When my engine finally runs out of fuel, how long will I stay at that speed? Forever. Back here on Earth, in the car, I'm a body in motion, and I've got inertia. But if I slam on the brakes... Oh, ow! Sorry, man, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm acted on by this outside force form of this seatbelt. Keeps me from going through the windshield. In a jet, we have seatbelts just like in your car, only a lot more of them. It's because we're moving faster, we have a lot more inertia, requiring a lot more outside force to stop you. Well, so far we've looked at the seatbelts you're using in your car when you're doing 40 miles an hour. And the ones we use in the aircraft when you're doing 200 miles an hour. But what kind of seatbelt would you use when you're traveling at 17,000 miles an hour. That's how fast you have to go to escape Earth's gravitational pull and achieve orbit. In the early days of the space program, scientists had no idea on how to attack that problem. So they built sled tracks like this one. One here at the Dryden Flight Research Center at Edwards Air Force Base, and the other one at Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico. There they conducted tests associated with the rapid accelerations and decelerations associated with the space program. They put a man on a rocket sled, and shot him at over 400 miles an hour. And then using a water trap, they abruptly stopped the sled. Huh. Oh man, that hurts. Nah, just kidding. That was a dummy they fired first. But Colonel Paul Stapps volunteered for the human testing. And while he survived numerous negative G tests, he said that when the sled jerked to a stop, it felt like his eyes had popped right out of their sockets. Wow. All of these, the car, the jet, the rocket sled, they demonstrate how the law of inertia works. Each one just a bigger example of the other. So let's review the first law again. A body in motion at a constant speed will remain in motion at that speed unless acted upon by an outside force. A body at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. All right, two things I want to change about that. First of all, it's not speed, it's actually velocity. And it's not an outside force, it's actually an unbalanced force. We'll talk about both of those. So check this out. You can try this one out at home. This experiment will demonstrate the concept of inertia. An object at rest stays at rest. When the hoop is pulled out sideways, there's not enough friction to cause the pen cap to accelerate, so it falls straight down into the bottle. To complete this experiment, you will need a crochet hoop, a bottle filled with water, and a pen cap. First, place the crochet hoop on top of the bottle and line up the pen cap so it is directly over the bottle's opening. Place water in the bottle to make it more stable. When you're ready to perform the experiment, use a single finger wow. on the side of the crochet hoop and pull straight horizontally. If you pull <laughs> slightly up or down, the experiment won't work, so it takes some practice to get it right. Nice, that's cool. So remember, we're talking about forces. So a balance force means it's not going to change the object that's in motion. They're, they're, it becomes equal and opposite, and therefore it will not change the object's motion. But an unbalanced force, that can cause the object to start moving, stop moving, or change direction. So thinking about that, if an object's at rest, like this tennis ball, nothing will happen to it unless something acts upon that tennis ball. Your homework will not get done on its own. Your room will not get clean on its own unless, of course, an unbalanced force acts on it. 
If an object is in motion, then it will stay in motion. It will have that same velocity, both speed and direction, until acted upon by an unbalanced outside force. So what makes things slow down on your own? Because after all, you know, things do slow down eventually. Well, friction, the surfaces rubbed together, as well as the gravity, cause the object to slow down. Inertia is the concept that there is a resistance to that change in motion. It's a tendency that objects will want to stay at the same speed and velocity, the same speed and direction forever, unless acted upon by an unbalanced outside force. Newton's first law is also known as the law of inertia. Inertia totally depends on mass. If you have an empty aquarium, it doesn't weigh that much. If you start moving it, it's easy to stop moving it. But if you have a full one, that's a little bit harder because once you get it to start moving, it's really, really hard to get it to stop. The greater the mass, the greater its inertia, the greater the force required to change its direction. If you imagine a ping pong ball and a, and a bowling ball. Ping pong ball, easy to stop. There's not much inertia. Bowling ball, a little bit more difficult, and it'll hurt. Here's a little video about the law of inertia. The law of inertia states that objects will maintain their state of motion unless acted on by an outside force. This means that moving objects will stay moving and still objects will stay still unless you push or pull on them. There are two safety devices in your car to protect you from the effects of inertia. The first is your seat belt. When the front end of your car rams another object, your car will suddenly stop or slow down. Because of inertia, your body will want to stay moving at whatever speed it was the moving right before through. the accident. If you're not wearing a seat belt, this means you'll hit a windshield. The seat belt provides, provides a force to stop your body's forward motion. <laughs> second safety device in your car is a headrest. When your car is hit from behind, the car is suddenly pushed forward. Your head will want to stay still, but your body will be pushed forward by the seat. This causes your head to feel like it is snapping back. Your head is actually staying still because of inertia, while the rest of your body is being pushed. Your headrest pushes your head forward with your body so that you don't suffer from whiplash. Look at the difference between a headrest that is properly set versus one that is set too low to push your still head forward. So that is goal five. Students will be able to explain Newton's first law.